Egyptian literature traces its beginning to ancient Egypt and is some of the earliest known literature. Indeed, the Egyptians were the first culture to develop literature as we know it today. That is ancient. The ancient Egyptians wrote works on papyrus as well as walls, tombs, pyramids, obelisks, and more. Perhaps the best known example of ancient Jehel literature is the story of Sinuhe. Other well known works include the Westcar Papyrus and Ebers Papyrus, as well as the famous Book of the Dead. While most literature in ancient Egypt was so called wisdom literature, that is meant for instruction rather than entertainment, there also existed myths, stories, and biographies solely for entertainment purposes. on the writings of the ancient Egyptians, as the Greco-Roman poets who came to Alexandria to be supported by the many patrons of the arts who lived there, and to make use of the resources of the Library of Alexandria. Many great thinkers from around the ancient world came to the city, including Callimachus of Libya and Theocritus of Syracuse. Not all of the great writers of the period came from outside of Egypt. However, one notable Egyptian poet was Apollonius of Rhodes, so as known as of Panopolis, author of the epic poem Dionysiaca. Writing first appeared in association with kingship on labels and tags for items found in royal tombs. It was primarily an occupation of the scribes who work out for the Per Ankh institution or the house of life. The latter comprised offices, libraries, laboratories, and observatories. Some of the best-known pieces of ancient Egyptian literature, such as the pyramid and coffee texts, were spoken from the New York administrative documents, love poetry, and tales. And here is an example of demotic and Coptic texts. Egyptian literature. Also written at this time was the Wesker Papers, a set of stories told to Khufu by his sons, relating the marbles performed by priests. The instruction of Amenemov is considered a masterpiece. Towards the end of New Kingdom, the vernacular language was more often employed to write popular pieces like the story of Wenamun and the instruction of An. The former tells the story of a noble who is robbed on his way to buy cedar from Lebanon and he struggled to return to Egypt. From about 700 BC, narrative and stories or instructions such as the popular instruction of Anches Sonki as well as personal and business documents were written in the Motic script and face of Egyptian. Many stories written in the Motic during the Greco-Roman period were glued by Ramesses II. Alexandria became an important center in early Christianity. During roughly the 1st to 4th century, Coptic works were an important contribution to Christian literature of the period, and the Nag Hammadi Library helped preserve a number of books that would otherwise have been lost. Islamic 
By the 8th century, Egypt had been conquered by the Muslim Arabs. Literature, and especially the dark history of under the new Egyptian, brought about by the Muslim conquerors. Several important changes occurred during this time, which affected Egyptian writers. Papyrus was replaced by cloth paper, and calligraphy was introduced as a writing system. Also, the focus of writing shifted almost entirely to Islam. An early novel written in Arab Egyptian was Ibn al-Nafis, Theologus Autodictatus, a theological novel with futuristic elements that had been described as a science fiction. Other keys or a side statement of praise similar to but longer than a blarb was often placed in the works of Egyptian. Authors beginning in the 14th century, tales of 1001 nights or Arabian nights can be traced to medieval Egyptian storytelling traditions. These tales were probably in circulation before they were collected and codified into a single collection. Medieval Egyptian folklore was one of the three distinct layers of storytelling which were incorporated into the nights by the 15th century, the other two being Asian Indian and Persian folklore and stories from Abbasid era Baghdad. Modern Period In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the Arab world experienced al nadi a cultural renaissance similar to that of Europe in the late Middle Ages. The Nada movement touched nearly all areas of life, including literature. Two of the most important figures of 20th century Egyptian literature are Taha Hussein and Nagib Hafuz, the latter or whom was the first Egyptian to win the Nobel Prize in Literature. The 1990s saw the rise of new literary movement in Egypt. New authors have proliferated and include Samir Garib, Ali Mahfoud Hamid. for being the real best seller, originally in Egypt and the Arab world, and subsequently in the West, downtown and Cairo, and the changes that have affected the building and its inhabitants. It also written in English and in many other languages. On being, this book is totally different conceptually in its style from one we were just talking about. It is a wicked and complex thing. People debate what actually takes place in the book. It's about a terminally grumpy 20-something negotiated Kairos shopping malls and high prices. The book as a whole reflects a culture that will be familiar to anybody in Egypt, who sits, as so many here do, at that meeting point between global culture. Life is more beautiful than paradise. This is a very interesting quote those to on being Abbas El Dai. It's non-fiction but the autobiography of a young man who grew up in the city of Upper Egypt. His parents are middle class and he drifts into joining one of the most important Islamic groups, the Jama'a Islam. 